You're tuning into Awani Global with me, Naila Huda. The global pandemic has highlighted the need for diplomacy now more than ever. And for a small country like us, we can benefit from our strategic partnerships, learning from the experiences of others and how to navigate uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. Beyond this uh, global pandemic as well, we want to look at strategic partnerships and how uh, this can offer new investment opportunities essential for economic recovery. So today we want to uh, hear from the Embassy of Poland in Kuala Lumpur. How has their COVID-19 situation been like back at home? And moving forward, what can be new areas of cooperation for Malaysia and Poland? And so today joining me is His Excellency Ambassador Krzysztof Demiski from the Embassy of Poland in Kuala Lumpur. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining me. Uh, we want want to speak about June 21st, a very important milestone as this will be the celebration of the 50th anniversary since Poland and Malaysia established trade relations. So how is the embassy celebrating in uh, this very important milestone in the time of COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you very much for having me and good morning. Uh, well, you know, 50 years in the, in the life of a married couple, it's a uh, very long time, but in the relations between nations and states, it's not that much. In reality, it's not much at all. Uh, so we have a, still a good long way ahead of us, I hope so, in, in relations between Malaysia and Poland, Poland and Malaysia. Now, we have been planning a lot for this anniversary. But unfortunately, pandemic has made everything so much more difficult. And we have to, we had to, uh, in fact, limit ourselves to virtual uh, activities. The most important recently conducted by us was the, uh, was the logo contest, which we announced the common logo of Malaysia and Poland uh, commemorating these 50 years of our common relations. It was pretty successful, I must say. We got more than 300 entries, uh, most of them very good. And we had a big problem with choosing the best one. I have to say that uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mohamed Siabil, he won. Uh, but it was a tough, tough game, really tough game. Uh, he had a very interesting proposal, a very interesting logo, combining two birds, two national birds. Not so easy to do, quite frankly, to combine an eagle, which is a Polish national bird, and a hornbill, which is a Malaysian bird. But he managed to do it very successfully. Uh, my congratulations to him. Uh, <clears throat> we also have a number of other initiatives in, uh, uh, in the virtual space, mostly providing uh, information about Poland and Malaysia, about the relations between the two countries, historically speaking, because they go back something like 400 years, not officially, but unofficially yet, very much so. There were Poles coming to Malaysia in the 17th century. Uh, we have a website, which is www.pl50my.com. Uh, so anybody who is interested to know more about the Polish-Malaysian relations is welcome to, 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 to find out. Also on Monday, which is the coming Monday, we would like to invite the citizens of Kuala Lumpur to to observe uh, the KL Menara, which will be uh, illuminated with Polish national colors, which is red and white. And we also uh, suggest uh, whoever would like to take pictures, send the pictures to, 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 to the embassy and we can, we can provide attractive prizes for the best photographs. Now, I do want to talk about this situation getting normal, and that might seem like a um, long time to go, seeing how the cases have gone up in Malaysia as of late. Uh, but perhaps we can learn a little bit something from uh, Poland, how uh, 
we're seeing daily COVID-19 cases in Poland have um, seen a, a drop to four digits now in the past month or so. And, you know, that's a uh, big decrease from what we've been seeing in the past few months. So we want to know what is the current pandemic situation like in Poland right now. Um, perhaps you could share a little bit of what the strategy has been like over there in trying to get the cases down. Well, we had we had a standard strategy like like most countries with lockdowns and and obligatory mask wearing and uh, you know, closing down of restaurants and public places all, all, all these terrible things people want <laughs> to get rid of <laughs> as soon as possible. Uh, I have to say that uh, we had uh, some tough times as well. We had, used to have about seven thousand cases a day, but that's gone. Uh, recently, as far as I know, we had about three or four hundred cases. Uh, but the biggest achievement, I should say, is the vaccination program, because uh, we have managed to vaccinate 25 million people of 38 million of inhabitants. Uh, among these 25 million is 10 million fully vaccinated, which means they got double doses of vaccine. The vaccination program right now is going around 400 uh, per day, uh, 400,000, sorry, 400,000 per day, which is not bad. Uh, it's one of the best statistical data in the European Union. So hopefully within a couple of months, we should be, if everything goes well, we should be COVID free or at least COVID free to the degree that makes normal life possible, normal life and also economic life possible. So far as the economy is concerned, uh, of course, uh, we, we suffered like everybody else, like every other country, uh, maybe to a lesser degree than, than most other European countries, or most Western European countries, let's put it this way, because uh, decline of GDP in Poland was comparatively not so big. It was somewhat close to 3%, 2.8 to 3%. Now the uh, GDP growth, which is uh, projected for this year, should be over 5%. So uh, we are getting over it pretty well. It only shows that the economy is pretty resilient business community is doing really well. The, uh, the unemployment level is very low. It's around 3%. In fact, the country is in need of, of labor. It's in need of for, also foreign labor. We, we are employing a lot of migrant labor in these, these days. So the economy is growing pretty, pretty fast. Um, from this perspective, I should be rather optimistic. I believe if nothing really bad happens, and you know, uh, a new virus is found somewhere, <laughs> somewhere and it infects all of us, we should be getting over it, hopefully within a couple of months. We want to talk a little bit more about that optimism and hopefully how our cooperative trade relations can benefit from that. But before that, I do want to know, uh, you know, speaking about uh, how the economy has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, obviously all around the world, but how has this specifically affected Poland and Malaysian trade relations? And how has that actually been like our trade relations in the past? And how has that changed since the pandemic? Well, it's a difficult subject because on the one hand, it made everything more difficult. Uh, but on the other hand, Malaysian exports to Poland uh, grew in a very, very big way. Primarily, be primarily because uh, we were importing uh, quite a lot of products uh, from Malaysia, mainly, mainly rubber gloves. Uh, of which Malaysia is the main producer, the world's top producer. So it has it has created a, a large disbalance in our uh, bilateral trade. I would say Malaysia is selling uh, selling to Poland uh, ten times more than it's buying from Malaysia than than it's buying from Poland. 
uh, last year the total turnover uh, between our two countries was uh, one and point one point five billion U.S. dollars, and uh, it puts Malaysia in the second place as the second most important economic partner of Poland within the ASEAN group after Vietnam. Uh, but our relations with Vietnam they go back many decades longer than. Than with Malaysia, back to the 50s in reality. So uh, it only shows that the the possibility, the, the, the perspectives of economic collaboration with Malaysia are very large indeed. They are very large. Uh, we should have, you know, pandemic is a problem, really, because we have been planning, uh, we have been planning visits, economic visits, we have been planning economic fairs. Uh, seminars, conferences, uh, and this pandemic, this COVID, <laughs> really put a stop to all that. <laughs> so so <laughs> it's, it's one thing to meet on, uh, on, on uh, in virtual, virtual reality, on, like we do, right, like we are speaking now, but it's, it's not how you do business. People have to meet together, they have to talk. They have to see each other. They have to see their products. They have to touch them. It really works then, and only then. So we have to wait. We still have to wait. The, the end of this problem that we all have uh, is the beginning of, of, a, of a new path forward. Okay, Your Excellency, I think I'm sensing a little uh, apathy on, on your hand when we're discussing about the pandemic. Obviously, you know, we're talking about how it's affected almost all aspects of our life. And so we want to talk about how we want to look towards the future to have a little bit of optimism in our trade opportunities. So as you mentioned, with our bilateral uh, trade relations strengthened this year with our uh, rubber glove exports, do you think that this will perhaps translate into an increase in interest uh, in Polish investments in Malaysia. How's that like looking this year and perhaps in the years to come post-pandemic? Uh, for the moment, there are 10 Polish companies which are active in Malaysia. They are mostly IT companies. Uh, as compared to those countries that I mentioned at the beginning that have relations with Malaysia going hundreds of years, uh, this is not very much. Uh, but these companies are dynamic. They want to stay here. Uh, some of them decided to make Malaysia a hub for the whole ASEAN. Uh, there are certainly possibilities of more companies of this kind investing in, in, in Malaysia. There were other companies as well, uh, I would call them large and important companies that were considering investing in Malaysia. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to come back to COVID. And <laughs> some of them even did invest, partly, <laughs> but had to stop it because of, the, because of all, the, all the restrictions. There are many possibilities of, of, of cooperation. I would say uh, the areas, you know, that are open to cooperation is high technology sector. It is uh, cyber security. This on, on this in this area, Poland is very good. Going back uh, close to a century, I would say. Uh, it's also financial technologies. Polish banking system is one of the most technologically advanced in Europe today. It's the uh, e-banking, the blockchain solutions, all sorts of things that make to tomorrow's banking uh, and tomorrow's banking really so important. It's the smart cities. Uh, 
some months ago, I participated in a seminar on smart cities here in Malaysia when personal participation was still, was still possible. Uh, there is uh, drone technology. Poland is a producer of various kinds of drones, small and large, for, for security purposes, for, for, uh, for environmental monitoring, uh, like, for instance, forest fires, uh, mm -hmm. floods, all sorts of things that do happen, unfortunately, from time to time. There are also green technologies, uh, electrical mobility. For instance, Poland is one of the Polish companies is the largest producer of electrical buses in Europe. Mm. Uh, and, and these buses are actually used in very many European cities around the European uh, Union. There is water technologies, water purification, retention, sanitation, all sorts of things uh, related to water. There's, of course, medical technologies special specialized medical equipment and of course agri technologies which i believe is very important for malaysia uh, with agricultural products mm -hmm. not only food but also technology how to uh, process food in a proper in a proper way and Poland is also exporter of a of a, of a halal food mm -hmm. to, to to malaysia because there are two uh, institutions in Poland which are uh, which have been granted uh, uh, the permission to to grant halal certificates by countries in in the in, uh, in the Middle East as well as in Malaysia some years some years ago. So possibilities are there. Uh, it's only a matter of 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 will and and of circumstances. And also I would say of of Malaysian legal legal system, mm. uh, which is quite important. For instance, our companies, like other companies, would like to have more freedom in uh, in employing uh, experts and specialists uh, of their choice. The IT companies, you know, they are running business. Mm. They must have people they know. Uh, rather than being forced to employ people who are uh, not exactly to their liking, possibly. Mm. So, this is how it works. And I can only hope that it will get better as soon as we get rid of the virus. <laughs> uh, but besides that, what could perhaps be other new incentives that Malaysia can introduce to consider giving uh, or perhaps appealing more towards foreign investment? Basically, Malaysia is, Malaysia is in a good situation because generally the legal structure, the legal system in Malaysia is good. The infrastructure is very good. The, the country is competitive. If you consider Malaysia, Singapore and other countries in the region, uh, Malaysia enjoys the competitive advantage. What we also need what any investor needs is, of course, political stability. This is very important. Ease of doing things. Less bureaucracy. More, more forthcoming bureaucracy. I would put it this way. This is important for business. It is also important for all the, all the expats and all the foreigners, including embassies living here in, in, and, and working here in, in Malaysia. Now, but speaking of investment, I would also like to mention Malaysian investment in Poland, because there is a big disbalance between our exports and our imports. We import 10 times more than we export to Malaysia. And one of the ways of somewhat writing the balance is, of course, foreign investment, and we would very much like to have more Malaysian investment in Poland. So far, uh, Malaysia has not invested that much. It's, in fact, only three investments, so far as I know, of uh, two of them in shopping galleries, 
Mm. And one is a, if I remember well, it is a canning factory, uh, fish canning factory, uh, belonging to a, to, 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 to a Malaysian business. And we are certainly looking for more. We more want to have more Malaysian presence in Poland. Uh, Poland is a good place for investments. Mm. In fact, our dynamic economic development, because this is how I should call our economic development within the previous 30 years, uh, is due to a good and friendly business environment. Mm. I mean, it is easy to do business in Poland. Uh, macroeconomic stability is guaranteed. Banking sector is working very well. Inflation is very low. Strategically, Poland is located right in the center of Europe. You can do business from Poland, you can do business, in fact, everywhere in Europe, uh, because it's right in the middle. middle of it. The infrastructure is excellent, including communication infrastructure. And what is probably the most important, I would say, is a highly skilled human potential. Mm. The people are well educated, Polish universities turn out excellent experts, graduates, many technical fields, in many uh, fields of business, banking sector, law, also all that that is really necessary for for uh, vehicle economic development. It is also necessary for, for foreign investors. We have investors from all over the world, in reality, from, uh, from the European Union, from the United States. We have huge investments from South Korea and from Japan. Mm. So Malaysia is still